Greetings, welcome back to the channel. Andrew May here, investment advisor and certified financial planner professional, bringing you real world strategies designed to assist you in navigating your personal financial life. Today I'd like to chat with you about a very important topic as it relates to the world of investing, and that is the topic of asset allocation. There are numerous ways an individual can go about managing their investments, and in a lot of cases, mismanaging their investments. I'd like to share with you today the strategy that I employ on behalf of my clients, on behalf of myself, and why I think it's worthy of your consideration. So let's begin today's presentation by defining asset allocation. And the type of asset allocation that we'll be referring to throughout the presentation is known specifically as strategic asset allocation. So strategic asset allocation is an investment strategy that incorporates the following elements. First, a broadly diversified portfolio, which utilizes a variety of asset classes such as stocks, bonds, and cash. These asset classes exhibit varying degrees of correlation, meaning some may move in the same direction at the same time, while other asset classes may move in the opposite direction at the same time, meaning that they are negatively correlated, having negatively correlated assets in a portfolio adds to the level of diversification. Strategic asset allocation is also designed to maximize expected portfolio return per unit of risk, also referred to as volatility. It's designed to accommodate an investor's goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon Strategic asset allocation is often long-term focus and it shuns market timing. It's a buy, hold, and then rebalance strategy. From a historical perspective, asset allocation was born out of modern portfolio theory, which is a theory on how risk-averse investors can construct portfolios to maximize expected return based on a given level of market risk. The theory was pioneered by Harry Markowitz in his paper, Portfolio Selection, published in 1952 in the Journal of Finance. He later won a Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences in 1990 for developing modern portfolio theory, also referred to as MPT. Investment portfolios that are managed utilizing strategic asset allocation often have exposure to a wide variety of asset classes. These asset classes may include stocks, which are also referred to as equities. Stocks may also be broken down into sub-asset classes divided by country, meaning U.S. or foreign or emerging markets, size, meaning large cap stocks, mid cap or small cap stocks, and finally, style referencing growth or value stocks. Another asset class commonly found in portfolios that utilize strategic asset allocation are bonds, and bonds are also referred to as fixed income securities. Like stock, bonds can be further divided into sub-asset classes. Some portfolios may include bonds issued by the U.S. government or foreign governments, by U.S. corporations or foreign corporations, and also by maturity. In other words, bonds can be purchased that are short-term bonds, intermediate-term bonds, and long-term bonds. All of these type of sub-asset classes have different risk and return characteristics and may or may not be utilized in the development of an investment portfolio. Portfolios utilizing strategic asset allocation often have some percentage of assets dedicated to cash. This is going to depend on whether the investor is actually adding money to the portfolio in an effort to accumulate more wealth or if they're taking distributions. Two additional asset classes that may be found in portfolios that utilize strategic asset allocation include real estate and natural resources. In strategic asset allocation, portfolios are created to align with an investor's goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. On this slide, we'll review three hypothetical examples that demonstrate how this concept can be applied. In scenario number one, we have an investor whose primary objective is growth. They have a high risk tolerance and a long-term time horizon, 20 plus years. So in this scenario, they could have a portfolio with 68% exposure to U.S. stock, 20% exposure to international stocks, 5% to real estate, 5% to natural resources, 
and 2% to cash. So this would be a growth-oriented portfolio. There's no exposure to bonds or fixed income, really just to cash. And then the rest, the other 98%, are to securities that are going to provide long-term growth and dividend income. In scenario number two, we have an investor whose objective is growth and in income. They have a moderate risk tolerance and still a long time horizon, 20 plus years. So in this scenario, this investor could have a portfolio with 48% U.S. stock, 12% international stock, 4% real estate, 4% natural resources, 30% bonds, and 2% cash. So in this scenario, it's more conservative than scenario number one. So this investor is going to have 30% exposure to bonds and 2% cash which is more of a growth and income type allocation. And then finally, we have an investor whose primary investment objective is income. They have a low risk tolerance and then a moderate time horizon, 10 plus years. So in this scenario, this type of investor could have an investment portfolio with 16% exposure to U.S. stocks, 4% international stocks, 4% real estate, 4% natural resources, and then 68% to bonds and 4% cash. So they're going to have 72% exposure to bonds and cash with the rest and securities that can provide growth as well as dividends. The reason they hold more bonds than stock is because the bonds that they hold in this portfolio are going to be more stable while they do pay interest. They're going to be less volatile than the stock component. And so that's why there's a big difference between scenario number one and scenario number three. Also, I want to note that the asset allocation models that I'm associating with each one of these hypothetical examples is just for demonstration purposes only. It doesn't constitute any sort of recommendation, formal or informal. It's just to demonstrate that if someone has an investment objective and they're looking to grow their wealth versus if someone has an investment objective where they're looking for income, these are just examples of what portfolios could look like that are closely associated and I believe to be aligned with these investment objectives, risk tolerances, and time horizons. Strategic asset allocation is an investment strategy that's commonly used in both 401k plans and 529 college savings plans. You might be taking advantage of this investment strategy right now and not even be aware of it. 401k plans that offer target date retirement funds and asset allocation funds, those two types of funds often use strategic asset allocation. And 529 college savings plans that offer age-based investment options, well, those type of investment options often use strategic asset allocation as well. Today's presentation is designed to introduce you to the concept of strategic asset allocation. It is by no means designed to be comprehensive in nature. There are books written on this subject that are very detailed and in-depth, and I would like to recommend three to anyone who would like to learn more about asset allocation and particularly strategic asset allocation. These are three of my very favorites, and the first one is called The Intelligent Asset Allocator, written by William Bernstein. The next is All About Asset Allocation, the author is Richard A. Ferry, CFA, stands for Chartered Financial Analyst. And then the third is called Asset Allocation by Roger C. Gibson. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon.com, probably pick up a used copy, save you a little money. But I read these three books many, many years ago, and it changed the way that I managed money and thought about managing money. And I think if you read any of these books, it will have a, pro a profound impact on how you look at investment management. So in summary, today's presentation has been an overview on the subject of strategic asset allocation. When you think of strategic asset allocation, you should think of a broadly diversified portfolio where the monies that are in the portfolio are invested across multiple asset classes. And this is often achieved through owning mutual funds or exchange traded funds. This investment approach seeks to maximize expected return for a unit of risk. And risk is also referred to or can be thought of as portfolio volatility. This is a buy, hold, and rebalance approach. It eschews market timing. Portfolios are constructed to reflect investors' goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. And then this video is for educational purposes only. 
And to further your education, I recommend one, buying and reading one of the three books in the reference section or consulting with a professional investment advisor. I hope you found today's video informative, as always, and that you'll consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Also, if you know of anybody else who might benefit from watching this video, consider doing that person a favor and sharing the video with them. I plan on releasing new content every week, and I'd love to have you and any of your friends join me on this journey. And until next time, as always, I'm Andrew May, investment advisor and certified financial planner professional, and I believe that you, even with asset allocation, can do this. Thank you.